Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today out here in the vegetable garden. You know, it's a beautiful day here in June. In fact, today is June 28th. And so, you know, it's early summer. And so today I thought I would take you on a early summer garden tour. And I was also going to show you some of our flowers that we have here in our Plant Smart Living Gardens. So thanks for joining Bailey and I today out here in the vegetable garden. So this has been an interesting spring here in Pennsylvania, Zone 6. You know, we've had a lot of cool days. We've had a lot of rainy days, a lot of cloudy days. And so really the garden's a couple weeks behind in its growth, although things are coming along really well. And so I have five sections of our gardens here that I can take you on a quick tour. You know, we have our flower garden right here. My wife does a lot of planting of her flowers and perennials and and annuals and then behind me I have my 18 foot by 30 foot raised garden section where I have some tomatoes and peppers and all and then behind that I have my raised bed section where I have my garden structure and some of my 4 foot by 32 foot raised garden beds I have three of those and then I also have my potato patch area and then down below the pond there I have my pumpkin patch area where I also grow some some uh, I used to grow some pumpkins there, but now I have some melons growing there and some other, other different plants. And so, uh, so it is a beautiful day, beautiful sunny day here. It's a nice cool day. I can still wear my, my overalls here. And so, uh, so why don't we get started showing you some of these beautiful flowers we have here. Right behind where the camera was, I had built this corner trellis here years ago. And we have a clematis vine growing up here. We used to have a really tall tree growing up here, so I cut that out about three, four years ago and built this trellis here. And uh, it has really just uh, worked well here in the corner. And uh, this is a perennial clematis and it's just beautiful. So let's go take a look at some of the other flowers. And so my wife and I, we love these flowers. These are Stelladora flowers. These are a perennial that come up every year. And then we have a stone path. I love using stones and boulders in the garden. They just add a sense of age and and they're timeless and they just add a nice color and texture. And then we have a you know nice path that leads down to the pond. And then we have a lot of lilies here along the path. And then we also have some uh, rose bushes and some zinnias here. But we love trying to attract the birds and the bees and the butterflies to our gardens because they're certainly good pollinators for all the different plants. This is going to be a, this is a beautiful hibiscus tree here on the right. Unfortunately right now it's not blooming. We also have an herb garden that's right behind the house here. It's got some sage and some thyme and some dill, some parsley there couple other different varieties of herbs. Have some chives there. And then we also have some mint there on the corner. We have plenty of mint. But we love the lavender too. It adds a pretty pretty color and texture to the garden. Brings in a lot of bees. Butterflies. So let's go take a look at some of our bird feeders we have right here too. We enjoy having the birds here. I thought I would stop and get some close-ups of some of these beautiful flowers we have.
And these are Portulaca annual flowers that we have along the edge of our patio here. I think they sometimes call these mock roses. And so we also have our bird feeders here. We have some chimes and a finch feeder and a suet feeder and then we have another hanging. We have a hummingbird feeder, another bird feeder hang that holds a lot of different types of feed. And I also love my garden trellises that I have throughout the garden. And on this one we have some clematis growing up the right side here. My wife also enjoys her hanging baskets. We have some Vinca flowers growing in there. But also on the left of this trellis here I have one of my favorite tomato plants growing. It's a sun gold cherry tomato plant and that's going to be growing probably 10 to 12 feet long and so that's going to grow up and over this trellis. So I'm really looking forward to that. And so follow me along and let's go take a look at some of our vegetables that we have growing out in the garden. And so in this area here, I, this is my 18 foot by 30 foot raised garden bed. I grow my tomatoes in here, about three different varieties, and then I have some my green bell peppers over here. And I also have some basil and also some of my classic eggplant. And then here on the end, I, underneath my row cover here, my low tunnel hoop house is where I have my, I grow my broccoli in the spring and also in the fall. But in this raised bed here is where I, I grow my determinate type tomatoes, the bush type. You know, they get about 36 inches, maybe to 42 inches high. I have some plum crimson tomatoes, which are good for canning. You know, they're meaty, fleshy. They don't have a lot of juice in them, so they're good for that. And then some mountain spring tomatoes, some mountain fresh tomatoes, some Cherokee purple tomatoes. You know, they're good for sandwiches and salads. And you can even make, you know, we make a lot of salsa and we also make our own tomato sauce. And then the classic eggplant, you know, that's one of my favorites. And then we have a couple different varieties of peppers over there. So let's just take a closer look at some of these beautiful plants. And I always grow my basil right in the front of my garden because we use basil a lot. And this is the basil here. We've been picking this for the last couple weeks so it's still kind of small. And then behind that we have some peppers and some eggplant. And then these are my different tomato varieties right here the bush type or determinate variety. And then I also have a underground irrigation system that I use under this black polyethylene plastic here. You know, the plastic suppresses the weeds and holds in the moisture. It also warms up the soil early in the season. And my plants just thrive in this black plastic here. And so these are some of the eggplants that we have growing here, the classic variety. And then also here in front of me, I have a, a bush type cucumber that I put here also. It's growing really well here in the plastic. And then these are some of the different bush tomatoes I have here. I use a heavy duty tomato cage to support these. It's nice, quick, and easy, and efficient. And all these plants here require a good six to eight hours of sunlight. You know, the, the bell peppers, the sweet peppers, jalapeno peppers, the tomatoes, they all like a good, you know, eight hours of sunlight. Really, the more the better. And I also have here, this is my low tunnel hoop house where I had grown my broccoli. Most of, of this we have harvested, and uh, we just had a great harvest this year. I grow 18 plants of my gypsy broccoli. It's a heat tolerant variety under here and it, the uh, row cover really does a great job of protecting it from the early summer heat. And so let's work our way 
to the back section. I have this little workstation here that I have at the corner of this 18 foot by 30 foot raised bed. It's good for prepping my vegetables. And I also have a, a hose that I work with here to help clean the vegetables before I bring them into the house. Over there at my garden structure too, I also have another uh, workstation over there. So let's head over to that back area. And so this back section here is probably going three to four years old. I added these uh, four or these three four foot by 32 foot raised garden sections. And I use a composted leaf mulch that I mend with topsoil. I get that locally from Barnside Farms. And that's what I fill my raised beds with. I also add alfalfa pellets to my soil early in the season and then maybe a couple times during the season. But, you know, I enjoy building my trellises here. They add a certain elegance to the garden. And it also gives you the opportunity to grow things vertically in your garden and save space. Like this bed right here in front of me, I just finished picking our cauliflower from here. But in this back section, we have sweet potatoes, some indeterminate tomatoes that you know can grow up to eight feet or more. I have some eggplant back here also, and some red Russian kale, and some curly leaf kale, and some different types of melons and beans. I have my little garden fountain over there that I did a video on last year. Now you can build that for like under $65. And so anyhow, let's take a closer look at this back section here. And so in this bed here, I, these are four foot by eight foot sections. This is where I'm growing some sweet potatoes. And also in the section behind here, I'm growing some Santina eggplant here in, in the front here. Another variety of eggplant besides the classic eggplant. And then here in the back, I'm growing some uh, different varieties of indeterminate tomatoes. They get again, they get like eight feet or more if you if you don't prune them, and they'll grow right up into the frost. So it's good to have the two varieties of tomatoes growing in your garden if you have the space. The indeterminate tomatoes and also your determinate tomatoes. I also use the rope and twist method. I call it to support my tomatoes and you simply just tie the string around the base of the plant and then twist it as it grows and it's just a nice simple easy effective way to support your tomatoes and then I have a Swiss chard plant here growing it looks like a deer I got in my part of my plant here the other night but I do lay wire fence sections over some of my plants when they're young so the deer can eat them so in this four foot by 32 foot section here, I have my sweet million indeterminate. I have two plants that are gonna grow up and over this trellis here and they're really doing well so far. We'll take a closer look at these plants. And then I also have some of my Hungarian hot wax peppers plants. I have some red beets growing here and some some uh, Royal Burgundy bush beans that I really enjoy. Also some of my red Russian kale. And then I have some curly leaf kale here that are they're just growing wonderfully under this row cover. And so let's take a closer look at these beautiful plants. You know, again, these plants love a good six to eight hours of sunlight. Most of your gre leafy greens, they can get away with four to six hours of sunlight, but you know, these, these type of plants, you really want to provide good sunlight for them to grow nice, healthy, and strong. And so this is a sweet million indeterminate tomato plant that I have mentioned earlier. I, I'm growing two up this trellis here. And this is the first year that I'm growing this variety. And it seems to be doing really well. I have a few tomatoes that are growing inside the, the plant there. But uh, it's got a lot of nice blossoms growing on it. And uh, I've been using some of my jute twine to train it up the trellis there. And so it's a nice, healthy looking plant. And again, I'm not going to be pruning this either. I'm going to let it do its own thing. And it's just amazing the, the amount of tomatoes it will 
reduce on the vine. Then right here in front I also have some, this is a golden bell t pepper plant that I'm growing here. And th this is also some of my Hungarian hot wax, wax peppers right here. I use a wooden stake to tie them up when they're young. And then back here I have some of my red beets. I actually need to go through and thin out some of these red beets. But they're growing really well. I do have some peppers already growing here on these Hungarian hot wax plants. We've been uh, picking these and so they're doing really well here in this full sun. But over here alongside the peppers I have my these are my royal burgundy beans growing. These are starting to flower so we should have beans sometime soon. And then on the other side of the bed here is where we have some of our red Russian kale. Again, it's something really easy to direct sow in your garden. In fact, I direct sowed my royal burgundy beans also. Something really easy to grow in your garden. But over here to the far end of my bed here is where I have my curly leaf kale growing here and it's just been growing wonderful under the row covers. I like growing my brassica plants underneath the row covers so that the cabbage butterfly doesn't attract or attack them and you know devour the plants you know that cabbage worm. But it's just flourished underneath these row covers. The plant's probably a good 24 to 30 inches tall. And then to the left of my kale there, I have some more red beets growing. I'm growing a lot of red beets this year so I can store some over the winter. I just love the homegrown red beets. They have a nice buttery taste to them. So here on my last four foot by 32 foot raised garden bed, I have my garden fountain here on the end. I have some white petunias and some portulaca plants in the foreground. But then I also have some more sweet potatoes growing and also some kushal squash and some butternut squash plants and also some watermelon and some um, cantaloupe. So let's take a closer look at these plants. But this here is my little garden fountain that I installed in my garden. It's also great for bringing in the different birds. And, but it adds a nice sound to your garden. You know, it's nice and tranquil and peaceful and therapeutic having a beautiful little fountain in your garden. And then these were some of the Portulaca annual flowers that we planted. They're starting to open up now with the sunlight. Earlier they were closed in the morning. And then those are the wave petunias that we have behind the fountain. They just add a beautiful vibrant color to the garden, these wave petunias. A little turtle there and a frog on the other edge. And so the other sections here, I have some sweet potatoes growing here in the front. It looks like the deer came in and nibbled some of the leaves off, so I need to get a fence section and cover that. But back here we have some of our butternut squash growing. We have some of the striped kushal growing. And you can just see how these are just really taking off. They're loving all this sunlight. We've had a lot of cloudy days here in Pennsylvania, but with this sun, they're really starting to grow. But just a nice, healthy green leaf. And then on the end of the bed, we have, I have a couple of watermelons growing, plants growing, and then some cantaloupe. 
And so right behind me is my outdoor garden structure. You know, right, I have some boulders here in the front. I love using boulders again in my garden. And, uh, you know, this is an elephant ear plant that's probably going to get about five feet tall. It's got full sun, so it just loves this environment. And then we have another vining plant growing up the trellis there. And then uh, behind me here, I also have my, I have an outdoor shower here that I enjoy using during the summer, you know, when I'm get real sweaty from working out in the garden or, or cutting the grass. And so let's take a closer look at this uh, garden structure. But before we look at the garden structure, I just thought I would show you here in the foreground of my elephant ear plant, I have some annual vinca flowers growing here and uh, we'll just add some beautiful color and texture to the garden. And so this garden structure here has been a nice focal point for my garden. It's very practical. You know on the end there I have some canna lilies growing and also a morning glory vine growing up that trellis. But I also have my nice outdoor workstation that I use for making our sauces and preparing all our vegetables outside. And then I also, as I mentioned earlier, have a shower inside that one structure. And so on the other side of the garden structure here, I have a sun gold cherry tomato plant growing up the side there. And I also have my some Malabar spinach. And so let's just go up and we'll take a little closer look here at the plant. Doing really well here. Again, I'm using the rope and twist method to support the tomato as it grows up the trellis there. You can see I have it tied to the top. But over here is where I also have my Malabar spinach growing. Again, something that kind of got a late start this year, but it's going to eventually take off with some of this good hot summer heat. But along the edge of my lawn here, bordering the woods, you know I have some canna lilies growing too. I love these canna lilies. You know they grow about four to five feet tall with a beautiful red vibrant flower on them. I call them flames of fire. But anyhow down below me here is my potato patch area. So let's go take a look at those potatoes down there. So I'm down here standing underneath my cattle panel trellis. I did a video last year on how you can build this for under $45. I got the, tr the cattle panel from uh, Tractor Supply for like $22. And then you use some fence T-posts, the metal ones, and drive them in to help support it. But uh, it's a nice entrance to my garden here. And I'm growing up two sun gold cherry tomatoes up this trellis. It's one of my favorite tomatoes, as I mentioned earlier. But they're going to grow probably 12 to 14 feet up and over this trellis. And you know what's wonderful about that is that you can, you know, I just love going out in the garden and eating tomatoes off the vine or cucumbers or, you know, kale. And so uh, let's take a closer look at these tomatoes plants. But, uh, you know, also like in the front I have, this is another elephant ear plant. And then behind me, you know, I have some more elephant ears. I have my purple Martin birdhouse up there on the pole. And uh, so let's take a closer look at these uh, tomatoes. And so this is one of these elephant ear plants that I grew. You can buy the bulbs at local garden centers for around five dollars a piece, maybe less, even at the end of the season. But you know, over here is where I have my sun gold cherry tomatoes growing up here. And uh, I have some tomatoes already growing there on the plant. And I end up training these up and I use jute twine to tie them to this cattle panel trellis. And they do really well. I see Bailey's joining us today out in, in the garden. It's always fun when he visits us. But anyhow, this is my the base of my Purple Martin birdhouse. I built this a couple years ago. Unfortunately, I don't think we've ever gotten Purple Martins in there. But anyhow, it's fun watching different birds fly in and out of there. And here is where I have three varieties of my potatoes growing. I have some Kennebec potatoes, some Yukon Gold, and also some Red Northern potatoes here that are ready to pick soon. You can 
you know, they're ready to pick when your the vine starts to die back. I grew these in some wood chips that have decomposed for about two to three years and they, they've done really well. I also planted five of my canna lilies right here in the center of my garden. It's kind of adds like a bouquet of flowers, uh, a nice focal point when you're walking into this garden. And the canna, canna lilies are nice because you can use these uh, year after year. I just store them down in my basement. But over here, I also have another cattle panel trellis. And I have some more sun gold cherry tomatoes growing up these, up this trellis here. This doesn't get quite as good as sunlight. And so they're not gonna, they, they don't grow quite as hardy and, and uh, strong and full as the ones that get full sun, but they do pretty well here anyhow. But to the left over here, I also have some more butternut squash growing. And so I have one more area that I could show you, and that's down below the pond, there in my, what I call my forgotten pumpkin patch area. I have some different squash and some crookneck squash growing down there and also some more uh, sweet potatoes. So let's take a quick walk down there and I'll show you what I have down there to finish out this tour. So thanks for joining me today out here on this beautiful day here. And so follow me along as we head down towards the pond area. Are you coming, Bailey? Let's go for a walk. We're going down to the pond. Come on. And so we're almost there. We just got to finish across the bridge here. So this is the area here that I was talking about. I have four raised bed sections down here where I grow my melons and, and uh, pumpkins and everything else. So let's take a closer look. And so these four raised beds that I have here, they're about 30 inches wide by five feet long. I repurposed these from some old picnic tables I had and uh, they've really worked out great down here. And I end up filling these with my composted leaf mulch that's amended with topsoil. But in these beds here, I have some of my butternut squash growing, some crookneck squash, and some sweet potatoes. And so let's just take a closer look. And so this is one of my butternut squash growing here, and also my sweet potato. I had one other sweet potato slip left over, and so I put it down here alongside the squash. Now under this, this box here doesn't get quite as much sun and so it's going to be interesting to see how this develops here. But over here, let's take a, a look at some of these other boxes. So I have some yam, sweet potatoes. I threw, th grew three varieties this year. The Beauregard, the Covington, and these yams. And so they seem to be really doing well in this box. As you can see, I have a wire fence section around this just to keep the deer out. Also on this one over here. In fact, on all my boxes down here, I usually have wire fence sections. But anyhow, I saved some seeds from some crookneck Canada squash, and these are really doing really well down here. And so I think this pretty much ends our tour here in our Plant Smart Living gardens. Well, it's been a beautiful morning here in Pennsylvania, zone six. You know, nice low humidity, a lot of sun, you know, so the plants are just going to love this type of temperature here. So anyhow, I just want to thank you for joining me today out here on our Plant Smart Living Garden Tour. Hope this gave you some tips or ideas for your garden. And so anyhow, if you have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them in the section below. And you can also visit us at plantsmartliving.com. And there you can learn more about gardening and also how you can reclaim your health by adopting a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. Well, anyhow, I hope you have a wonderful day today. So thanks for joining me today. 
Until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.